think in the West, we sometimes take for granted having access to the internet. And perhaps we forget what an amazing resource it is with tools on which children can learn and play and code, the ability to invent. But our children are in the minority. Most parents can't give that to their children and don't have access to the internet. They don't have access to a place in which their children can take their imagination and ability to learn as far as they could conceivably go without limit, without boundaries. And Project Hello World was designed to change that. What's going on? We're loading the solar onto the van to go to the portal to start the first build tomorrow. Exciting. <laughs> Chitabui is generally a lower income area, and it's pretty unique in the sense that you still have a really interesting, rich, vibrant culture that's left in this community. As they're building schools out here, the question is quality versus quantity, and the challenge is both. All over my travels, I found the same problem, and I became increasingly preoccupied with it. I started really digging into the problems, and at first, all I found were reasons that it wasn't going to be possible to do anything about this education deficit. Someone referred Catherine to me. We started talking about that need and that gap and, and what could possibly fix it. And that's when I came across Sugata Mitra's research in the Hole in the Wall project. Sugata put internet-enabled screens into slums in India to find out the limits of children's ability to self-teach and these children smashed his expectations of how much a child can learn beyond the classroom environment. We took some inspiration from Sugata Mitra's talk then we started talking about what would be the best design and format and layout for an education project that could be public and accessible to as many possible children and people as we could possibly do. At the same time, we wanted it to be easy to build and replicate, so we've built it almost entirely from off-the-shelf components. So what is included in a Hello Hub is a Wi-Fi access point and the charging point for anyone that has devices. The system is loaded with educational applications that can be used by anyone in the community, and it has two built-in big screens that are touch panels so that more than one person could participate at one time. One of the parts of our process that's really important is that we build it together. The aspect of community-led development and the value that it brings is that ownership is an essential part of sustainability. What that looks like with the Hello Hub is not only protecting it and sustaining it to keep it running, but also to take advantage of all the resources that it has to offer. The Hello Hub project for me is very opportune. It will inspire most of the people around to do more discovery, to know that there is something beyond this small village of Kidubuli, to find and the answers to the needs of their own area. As a social worker, and I really want my community to really move ahead. The Hello Hub will be helping the community members to also know much more about a new world eh? whereby you use internet for you to find each and everything just for yourself. For me, I am a farmer. I have wetland. I want to start fishing industry. If I got the knowledge, I can practice those things. And youth, they see me how I have started that project and they get knowledge how to create their own jobs. It will fight poverty in Africa. We know that education is absolutely critical to ending cycles of poverty around the world. We have an opportunity to reach children who have nothing. 
If we are able to build hundreds and eventually thousands of Hello Hubs across the continent of Africa and over the world, wherever there is an education deficit, we will be able to educate thousands and eventually millions of children and that will go an extraordinarily long way to closing the poverty gap in communities that need it most. I'm not going to